Hey guys, and welcome back to another day of Freak Week. So recently on my podcast, Mile Higher Podcast, if you do not watch it, what are you doing? We did a whole episode on haunted objects, and I found it to be really interesting because it's not something that I actually know a ton about. We talked about two different haunted dolls, and I was so interested in the stories behind them that I wanted to do it on this channel because I know a lot of you don't watch my podcast or listen to my podcast, I should say. And these stories are really, really interesting. I tend to be someone that can be very skeptical towards the paranormal. I do believe in the paranormal for sure, but I'm very skeptical about all stories and all content related to it. And these stories, you know, it's hard because a lot of the times you're not going off of fact, you're going off of people's recollections of something that happened to them and their experiences. So you will definitely have to be the judge if you think that these dolls are haunted. Either way, the stories of these two dolls are really, really creepy and just fun to hear about. So first of all, we're gonna talk about Robert the doll. I think this is the creepiest looking doll on the face of the fucking planet. But this story actually dates back to the 1900s. There was a young boy named Eugene Robert Otto, or Gene, as they called him for short. And at some point he was given a handmade doll. And this doll was really tall, like three feet tall, really creepy looking, like honestly the creepiest looking doll ever. And the doll was actually given to him by one of his parents' servants. Which is interesting, because you think like, hmm, did they know what they were doing? Were they getting back at the parents for treating them badly or something like that? So Gene and his family lived in this house in Key West, Florida known as the Artist House, and it's still there. It's located at 534 Eaton Street and was built between 1890 and 1898. So here they are living in this house and they bring this doll into the house and Gene really likes the doll. He gets very attached to it very quickly and he names it Robert. He kind of treated him like an imaginary friend. He would call him his best friend and stuff. He just really, really liked this doll. I mean, it's a pretty big doll and he got very attached to it, almost like it was a person. And at first, Robert seemed like a pretty normal doll, but it wasn't long until Robert started acting like a fool. And that is when some really scary stuff started happening to Gene. So one night when Gene was about 10 years old, he was sleeping in bed like any other normal night. And then he woke up in the middle of the night and he saw Robert just sitting on the end of the bed watching him sitting upward, the doll. So obviously you'd be terrified from something like this. So Gene started screaming wildly for his mom and she heard him woke up and rushed to his room. However, when she got to his room, the door was locked. She could not open it, but inside she heard what she describes as furniture flying around, like things being rearranged and crying from Gene. Finally, she was able to open the door somehow and that's when she saw Gene just curled up in fear on his bed. His room was totally like ransacked in shambles and Robert the doll was just chilling at the end of the bed. And apparently the only thing that Gene said was, Robert did it. And this wasn't the only thing that his parents noticed happened. They noticed quite a few things with Robert the doll that were weird. For example, whenever Gene would talk to Robert, like as if it was an imaginary friend or something like that, sometimes they would hear someone actually respond to him in his room. They also said they experienced seeing the doll's impressions change in his face and actually seeing him speak with their own eyes. They claimed that they literally would see him laughing sometimes and sometimes moving around. Now it's so creepy is Robert actually continued to live with Gene throughout his lifetime, like until he became an adult. And eventually, you know, he left the house, he moved on, he got married. And when his parents died, he actually moved back into the house with his wife, Anne. And this is when Gene decided that it's probably best that uh, Robert goes up to the attic for a little bit for the rest of his life, maybe. This was mainly because of Anne. I mean, she was sketched out by this doll. It was really big. She was like, mm, this thing needs to go out of the house. And if you don't want to get rid of it, it needs to you know, be out of sight. But apparently once Gene put Robert in the attic, he became pretty pissed off about it. They claimed that they could hear him stomping around, pacing back and forth and giggling in a devilish way. And kids in the neighborhood also said that Robert would watch them out the window and taunt them, make fun of them, mock them. They would just be walking to school and Robert would be up in the window trolling them, literally. So the kids started telling their parents and the parents told Gene that there's a dog watching kids out the window and making fun of them. Gene thought he had locked Robert up in the attic and thought there was no way that he was sitting in front of the window. He didn't place him there. Now, the weirdest thing about this whole window thing is the window was in their master bedroom. So this is very odd because Robert's supposed to be in the attic. Eventually, word got back to Gene that 
there was a doll up in his attic haunting kids on the street. So apparently he was shook by that because he was like, mm, I definitely had him locked up in the attic. How could he be in the bedroom window? And that's when he went upstairs and he actually saw Robert by the bedroom window in a rocking chair, just sitting there looking out. According to Gene, he kept putting Robert up in the attic and Robert just kept coming back down to the bedroom window. So Gene ended up dying in 1974 and apparently he did nothing with Robert. He actually may have just forgot about him and left him up in the attic. So eventually a new family moved into the house and a little girl went up to the attic and found Robert. <laughs> However, apparently it wasn't long before this little girl discovered that Robert was alive somehow and evil. She said she would wake up all the time to Robert throwing things around her room and scaring her. So it wasn't long before the family was like, enough of this shit and got rid of the doll. And they actually donated him to the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. And word got around quickly about Robert the doll being in this museum and visitors came from all over the world to see him. And after doing some research, the museum actually traced Robert's origin to the Steve Company, which is a toy company that is the same toy maker as the first manufactured teddy bear in honor of Theodore Roosevelt. And one of their historians said that Robert was probably never intended to be sold as a doll. He was probably some type of window display piece. And now even though Robert is in a museum behind glass, he is still thought of to be very haunted and very cursed. People who work at the museum and people who have just come to visit say that Robert has brought like havoc into their lives. They think that Robert does not like to have photos taken of him and that even if you ask, which you're supposed to ask permission, that he could curse you. At the museum, there's actually a bunch of letters behind Robert from people apologizing to him for taking his picture. There are people that claim that after they saw Robert, their lives were ruined, especially after they took a picture of him. People have experienced car wrecks, accidents, loss of people, and other tragic hardships. And people really believe that it's because of Robert. The museum says they even received tons of emails from people people trying to apologize to Robert. At some point it became known that Robert has some type of sweet tooth, so it's become a thing for people to leave like candy and cookies and stuff for him as well. Some people have reported that when they try to take a picture of him, their camera literally breaks in their hands. People who work in the museum claim that they see his facial expressions change sometimes and that he will move positions within his box a little bit. Some people say that they've seen him put his hands up onto the glass. And Robert was actually the doll that inspired the Chucky movie which I have not seen. I think they're called Child's Play. I don't see those. Those look way too scary for me, so I have not seen them, but it's a really interesting story, and I'm curious what you guys think about it, if you think it's real. This next one is also based on a movie. A lot of you probably have heard of Annabelle the doll. I think maybe she's the most famous doll. So this one isn't quite as old, but basically in 1970, a woman was out at a thrift store shopping for her daughter, and she ended up finding like a Raggedy Ann doll, and she decided to pick it up for her daughter. Her daughter was actually in college at the time, but she just loved to collect dolls, so she thought it would be a perfect gift for her. Her daughter loved the doll and took really good care of her. And at first, everything was fine. There was nothing out of the ordinary with this doll, but gradually over time, they started to notice that this was not a normal doll at all. According to them, the doll would move by herself, walk by herself, sit, stand, pretty much function like a normal person. A lot of the times they would have the doll in one room and then they would find her in a completely different room in the house. They would literally see her standing up on her raggedy little legs all by herself. They would set the doll up in a specific position and like note how she was. And then when they would leave the room, they would come back and she was like in a new position, which was super, super creepy. They also found scraps of parchment paper with crayon writing on them. And this is really weird because they actually didn't have crayon or parchment paper in the house. But these little notes would say strange, creepy things along the lines of help me or help us. At one point, they actually found the doll with what looked like blood on her hands, which really freaked them out. I don't know how these people end up hanging onto these dolls any longer than they do. Like the first sign of a haunted doll, that thing would be out of my house so fucking fast. So it was at this point that they decided to contact a psychic medium. And the medium ended up telling them that the doll was actually haunted by a little girl who had died on the land that their apartment complex was built on. This little girl was apparently around six years old and her name was Annabelle Higgins. 
And through the psychic, she communicated with them that she really liked their family. She liked the doll and she wanted to stay. So this is when they decided that they would go ahead and let her stay in their house. Apparently, Annabelle promised that she wouldn't do anything to them. She was just gonna hang out. She wasn't gonna scare them or anything, but she lied. Because they ended up granting a spirit essentially permission to live inside of the doll, this triggered a bunch of other paranormal activity in their apartment. Apparently they had a male friend sleeping over and in the middle of the night, he ended up getting attacked by the doll. He said that he was in some type of sleep paralysis. I've never experienced it myself, but basically sleep paralysis is this weird thing where you're somewhere between sleeping and awake. You're like normally waking up from a nap or even during the night or something like that. And you feel like you can't move and you're in this like weird state between awake and asleep, but you can't move your body at all, but you're awake in your head. And a lot of people report seeing paranormal things happen during one of these episodes. So their friend claims he was in the middle of having a sleep paralysis episode. And that's when he saw Annabelle the doll crawling around the room. And I can't even imagine. I honestly, I don't think I'd ever come back from that. And he claims that he was attacked by the doll. I mean, he woke up, he said that he was covered in scratches all over his body. And they were so bad that he was literally bleeding through his shirt. He also said that the doll was literally strangling him while he was laying there kind of asleep. So by this point, they were all really freaked out and they decided to contact paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren who are super super famous in the paranormal world and if you look them up online you're either going to see that they're complete cons or that they are the greatest paranormal investigators of all time. It's really mixed. A lot of people are very skeptical towards them. I don't know enough information to really like say what I think on them completely. People are critical of them because they have like made a lot of money but Ed and Lorraine went and did their own paranormal investigation on Annabelle the all, and according to them, it was not haunted by a little girl at all. Apparently it was actually a demon who had lied to the girls and lied to the psychic in order to get to the girls, to get them to trust it and then possess them. So this is when they happily gave up Annabelle the doll to the Warrens. And they ended up putting her in a glass display case and she's now displayed in the Occult Museum in Connecticut. And there's a sign on the glass that reads, warning, positively do not open. And again, just like Robert, people who have visited claim that they've had bad experiences or bad luck after visiting. And at one point, a guy and his girlfriend came in and the guy was trying to like show off for the girl and he started banging on Annabelle's case. And apparently after they left the museum, they were riding on a motorcycle on their way home and they got in a crash and the guy died. And the girl who survived the crash actually says that she firmly believes that the crash happened because they visited Annabelle. And apparently even though she lives in a glass case, the museum has her blessed and the case blessed every week to make sure that she doesn't escape somehow. And in 2014, like I said, they did make a movie on Annabelle and I have not seen them, but you guys should let me know how similar the movies are to these stories. But that's it for Freak Week for today. Make sure to thumbs up this video if you're enjoying the week so far. If you haven't already watched them, be sure to check out the other Freak Week videos I've already posted and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future uploads. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day. Stay spooky and I will see you next time. Oh,